welcome to the third review of the evening. Uh, it is a game called Even the Ocean. Um, probably, uh, like, Even the Ocean or something. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, I have not... This was not my game for the week. So, um, anyway, bullet points. Um, from the creators of Anodyne, uh, if you recall, we did an interview with the, uh, the creators of Anodyne, not, uh, what, like, a couple years ago? Like... Is it 2019 or 2018? Well, matters little. But um, comes the grand story about Aleph, a lowly power plant technician from what? Forge City, who finds her world turned upside down after a routine maintenance trip goes awry. Now working directly with White Forge Mayor's um, White Forge's Mayor Briggs to face an unknown menace, Aleph must navigate her newfound power and influence to save the city. Aleph's identity. Uh, identities, environmental issues, and the world's fate all hang in the balance of light and dark energies. So, we got the PlayStation 4 version of this game, so over to PettyFan for the review. So yeah, this game is a very retro-style 2D platformer, but mm -hmm. I guess the twist with this one is you have the shield that you can use to block projectiles beams you can also use it to catch like wind drifts so like you can use it to kind of glide it's very that one viking from the lost vikings mm -hmm. uh, like olaf i think yeah the, the one that ogre really liked mm -hmm. and yeah you can also lock the shield in like four directions you know mm -hmm. in front and back up and down and, you know, sometimes you need to angle it so it won't be caught by the wind so you can get past it. Sometimes catch the wind, catch a laser, you know, whatnot and so forth. So is it level-based platformer? or? Um, There's a whole grandiose story, but it's mostly level-based. Mm -hmm. And... Your health is um, the little energy bar down in the corner. If it gets too full either way, you'll die. Uh, huh. That's the balance of light and dark right there. Yep. I mean, interesting, you know, way to go about that, you know? Yeah. I gotta admit, the balance of light and dark always came across as kind of bullshit to me. Because, oh no, we're too good! The horror. Yeah. It's not always good and evil, though. I know, I know. In this case, it's probably, like, literally light and dark. Yeah. It's just, you know, light and dark are synonyms for good and evil. And it's like... And even when it is good and evil, sometimes there are certain things that get semantically included in good and evil that are... Mm -hmm. Well, like, if, you, there. if you're starting to have too much light energy, you can jump faster, but too much dark, you run faster. But jump lower, and vice versa. So it's one of those, you know, pick how you want to go about things. Because you could be really right. fast and, you know, potentially die to the next dark orb you touch. Or be really jumpy and not very fast at all. And I'm guessing that there are places where you need to do one or the other. Yes. I haven't seen anything that explicitly requires, like, a whole bunch of um, jump power. Like, you have an infinite double, double jump, so you can... Uh, or, or an infinite wall jump, rather, so you can just jump up walls. Mm -hmm. So... Getting up to places isn't all that much of an issue. So I don't know what all... You know... If I just haven't gotten far enough to find anything that, oh, I need to be, you know, three-fourths of the way up on white or on light energy or else I won't be able to make it. Mm. So there's that. And like as far as dark goes, I haven't also found anything, you know, that makes me think, oh, man, I need to have this speed. And there are also puzzles like this where the little um, thing with the ball that I'm holding 
If it touches either color, it disappears, but only the ball. And I also can't lock my shield doing this, or else I drop it. So this one is a little more, you know, precision. And then, yeah. You just take the um, little bars with the ball things here to the um, identically shaped receptacle. And then you can turn, you can fix the power station. There are several of them in each power plant. But before you get to the power plant, you need to, um, you know, get to the power plant. The, it's like its own little platforming challenge unto that, just without as much of the energy things. I haven't seen any, like, enemies. But, um... But uh, my brain just spazzed out for a second. A of, but there's a lot of lasers and little plant things. Yes. Mm. So more puzzle platformer than anything else. Yeah. Okay, that one's weird. Um. Like. Yeah. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. So yeah, the music is fine. It's, you know, genre appropriate. Uh-huh. And as far as um platforming, it's fine. You know, if you're having trouble reaching a jump, then you can just, you know, get more light power. Or mm -hmm. if you just want to get through this thing faster, well, more dark power. Do most things that, like, hurt you hit for, like, the same chunk of a bar, or...? Um, it depends. Like, bigger lasers do bigger damage, and bigger of the plant things do more damage. Okay. So, like, these little ones will do barely anything, but a um, large plant could give me up to a bar and a half. So that's something to keep in mind. And then, yeah, once you um, f get all of the power things to the receptacles, then there's like a little mini game in the control room where you're just, you know, having to redirect the flow. Like, what's the... Um, I think like pipe dreams or something like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Only there's no like real time limit. It's more just, you know, connect the dot. Well, it's more of a mirror game actually. But yeah. And yeah, as far as the story, it's it's there. Like I've been you know, mostly trying to follow along, but at the same time, it also, you know, kind of gets a little out there. That's not a surprise from the creators of Anodyne. And mm -hmm. Anodyne. You want to talk about games that got out there. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Though there is a whole bunch of speedrunning options. Like, you can turn off the dialogue... You know, skip screen fades, death animations, turn off autosave, stuff like that. And then there's other, you know, more quality of life stuff, I guess. Like, if it's turning off screen, screen flashes and shakes, um, instead of jumping, you float around, you can turn off death. You know, pass through gates... Sound effects captions, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff going on here. And then there's some things that I'm not really sure why this is kind of in here, but apparently you could sometimes the um, dialogue sounds can cause the game to crash. So there's an option to turn that off. Hmm. Not sure why that isn't something that they could have taken care of before release, but 
not knowing exactly what causes the issue, you know. Right. Like, and no, hmm? like I'm wondering if that's a PC issue or if that's something that was done in the porting process. Um, could be either or, honestly. Mm-hmm. Could I, be neither. <laughs> true enough. Could be PlayStation, PlayStation Four, I guess. Yeah. The world may never know. Mm. I mean, there are people who know, but when th that's the kind of thing that the, um, they would have to tell us. Yeah. Like. Anyway. Um. Oh, and yeah, the gameplay is fine. You know. I probably wouldn't come back to this a whole lot, but if you're into a retro puzzle-ish platformer, it's it's fine. So, so pricing, um, the game clocks in at fourteen dollars ninety nine cents, and that is a parity with platform. So it it's the same no matter which uh, system you own. But, as usual, the Steam version will have more stuff, and in this case, it's got the availability of the OST, which is uh, clocking in at $6.99. Um, it is also part of a bundle, and th this is probably a bit of a spoiler, because it's in the Queer Games Bundle 2. And, in case you're missing the connotation here, um, th that means the protagonist is gay. Or, yep. You know, so, which, once again, it's not a surprise from Anna Gleesic Productions. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, can't really rate this on in terms of the bundle because it includes nine games. And, uh, well, it's, uh, you know, I played Read Only Memories out of this bunch, but more to the point, it's clocking in at $90. Ah, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> For how many games? Nine games. Nine games which is so you know, not super discounted, then I imagine. Fifteen percent. Like, which yeah. is a decent enough discount. But so that, 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 as far as bundle discounts go, that is a if you want all of the things in it, go ahead discount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As opposed to a like go for it regardless discount. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Point is, it's. You know, this is the kind of bundle where we can't evaluate because there. You know, this is involving other games that are beyond the scope of this review, like as opposed to something that you know it's another part of the game or game. You know, it's the art books, it's the uh, OST, the what have you. It's DLC, all that stuff wrapped up into one package. Like, um. Anyway, so Petty, uh, do you think? that this game is worth $15. It really depends how into the story you get. Like, if you just were in it for, like, the platforming and stuff, I'd say wait for a sale. But there seems to be enough of a story here that you could probably get $15 worth of game out of it. I could definitely see that. Once again, probably not just the initial story, but um, whatever meta story is going on here and secret mm -hmm. stuff. Because, once again, Anodyne and Anodyne 2 had a lot of that as well going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I would not be surprised if it um, fell into that lineage. Indeed. Yeah. Right. So, anything else on Even the Ocean? Not that I could think of unless you guys have any questions. No. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Alrighty then. All right, so that'll about do it for Even the Ocean. Be sure to tune in after the break as we'll be reviewing Pendragon. <laughs> 